Welcome to the wonderful world of igneous rocks. You may not know much about these rocks yet, except that they form from super hot mineral melt. But don't worry, they won't burn you, they lava you. So these rocks start off as real hot stuff. Lava is the name that we give to the super hot mushy magma melt that erupts to the surface of the earth. Magma is below the surface and lava is above the surface. Pretty easy to remember, I hope. Now, any rock that forms from lava is called an extrusive igneous rock. These rocks cool really fast, geologically speaking, so the minerals don't have a ton of time to grow into these really nice big crystals. If you see a rock with nice big crystals, it's had loads of time to crystallize and probably came from magma, not lava. But this is a lava video, so let's get back to that stuff. Okay, let's meet those rocks. This diagram is from your textbook and it has a lot of good info, like what the different textures of igneous rocks are and where they come from. So we're just going to work our way around this diagram, stopping to meet rocks along the way. But we're not gonna drop in on the magma chamber. We did that in the last video and we got to see all those awesome intrusive igneous rocks with their coarse grain texture. Okay. Uh, oh, so that's something that should probably go into your notes, right? Intrusive igneous rocks have coarse grain textures. Okay, but let's get back to our extrusive igneous rocks. This is their video after all, their time to shine. When a volcano erupts, lava flows out, but sometimes it also spurts and sputters and sneezes out small blobs of lava that crystallize instantaneously. This generates a rock called obsidian because it crystallized so crazy fast, the minerals didn't even get to form even just a little bit. And they're frozen in exactly the same configura configuration they were in the melt, which gives obsidian its glassy texture. It's also called volcanic glass because, well, it is glass, cooled silica with ashy impurities. Speaking of stuff that gets spurted out of a volcano, let's meet the other rocks that fly out of volcanoes. Meet pumice and scoria. These are gassy rocks. Uh, that is, the, they're just little bits of lava that got thrown out of a volcano that still contained some of the gas bubbles that were boiling around inside that volcano. These bubbles got stuck in the lava blobs and finally made their escape, leaving their escape tunnels behind as evidence. They have what we call a vesicular texture, which just means that they're holy. Uh, here's a little thing I used in my undergrad years to remember the texture of pumice and scoria. Okay. So these rocks are holy, but not holier than thou because they're so gassy. Okay, so silly little things like that help me, and I'm hoping that maybe they'll help you. So what happens if all those blobs that fly out of the volcano, which by the way are called pyroclastics and can be ash, scoria, and the like, what happens when all those pyroclastic materials pile up? And it's still pretty hot, so it fuses together to make a rock that, you guessed it, has pyroclastic texture. The big chunks in a pyroclastic rock are held together by smaller chunks and ash that fill the holes between them. If the pyroclastic rock was gassy, like scoria or pumice, it might have somewhat vesicular texture as well, as sort of a secondary texture, and we call that tough. Uh, volcanic breccia doesn't have all those holes in it. Is it more solid than tough? Well, you breccia. Breccia also has larger chunks than tough. Okay, so now we finally get to the lava flows. When the lava that runs down the side of a volcano hardens, it forms into a fine-grained lava rock. These rocks are made of the melt left over from the magma chamber. Okay, so when a volcano erupts, it is erupting out magma from that magma chamber that feeds it. So if the erupting is happening after the chamber has already cooled and all of those mafic chemistry minerals have already formed rocks in the magma chamber, do you think there's going to be a lot of amphiboles and olivine in the lava rock? Yeah, no way. That's going to be an intermediate or felsic chemistry lava. And when that lava spills out of the volcanic crater, it starts cooling right away. It's like crawling out of bed on a cold winter night. It's pretty shocking. And the minerals cool so fast, they don't have time to make nice big crystals. But the crystals are still there. You just need your microscope to see them. So remember, there's three kinds of lava rocks, just like there are three kinds of magma rocks. You have mafic, intermediate, and felsic. Okay, but why keep lava and magma rocks separate, right? There are rocks that have big magma rock crystals, which are suspended in lava rock matrix, kind of like fruit floating around in a delicious jello.
Now what happens here is that crystals from the magma chamber are a little less fused together near the still hot liquidy magma, and some of those minerals might even be growing up the sides of the conduit between the magma chamber and the mouth of the volcano. So when the, or when the lava erupts out, it can carry those crystals with it out into the air and down the side of the volcano, where it hardens into a rock that we call periphery. The texture of this rock is both fine-grained and coarse-grained, and we call that mixed-up texture a porphyritic texture. These rocks are a mix of magma and lava rocks, and so they also have that mafic, intermediate, or felsic chemistry, just like magma rocks and lava rocks. In fact, all extrusive igneous rocks have a definite chemistry. Obsidian is almost entirely quartz, so it's decidedly felsic. Pumice is just a more felsic version of the mafic scoria. The only exception here are those pyroclastic rocks. They're made up of all kinds of rocks with all kinds of chemistry, so they aren't really felsic, intermediate, or mafic. Anyway, this is a classification chart that is really useful for naming these rocks, so let's go through it just a little bit. First, here on the left, you have all the textures that are listed. Okay, so rhyolite, andesite, and basalt are all fine-grained. Obsidian is glassy. You get it. Next, we have the mineral composition or chemistry of the rock here at the top, and it runs from left to right, right? Rocks on the left are felsic, in the middle they're intermediate, and at the right they're mafic. So rhyolite is a fine-grained felsic rock. Basalt is a fine-grained mafic rock. Now, here at the bottom is a handy little bar showing you the percent of dark and light-colored minerals in the rock. As you can see, the lighter the color of the rock, the more felsic it is, and the darker the color of the rock, the more mafic. Get it? Okay, I hope so. Well, there they are, all of the extrusive igneous rocks.